I'm looking for a very dangerous criminal named Thame. Have you seen him? Have you seen him? Uh, I gotta get out of here. Welcome to Real Filmmaking. My name's Corey, and today we're talking all about theme. So theme can be a little bit confusing when you start to talk about it with people. You know, some people might say, this is a theme, that is a theme. And so how do you know if you're right? Or how do you know if that person is wrong? Today, I wanna to give you some basic tips on how to identify themes and put themes into your different pieces of stuff that you're writing. So the best place to start is with a definition. Theme, as defined by Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is the subject or main idea of a piece of writing or other work. Think of theme as like the umbrella that covers us in the rain shower of narrative if you want to go with that metaphor. Or if you like another one, theme is like the icing that sits atop of a cake. So if you have a chocolate cake, which is like chocolatey and delicious, and then you have vanilla buttercream frosting on it, the frosting flavors that chocolate, but it's still chocolate at its core, but it gives the chocolate cake a different taste to it. That is what theme is. You can have a story about redemption and another story about redemption, but depending on what theme is wrapped around redemption, you'll have some other flavors to it. That's the best way to think about theme. Let's talk about some things first that theme is not. Theme is not a plot, it's not characters, it's not vague statements about things. And so, a working example, let's take a look at Finding Nemo. Beloved movie, most people know it. Fish goes across the ocean to save his son. Um, you know, Dory's there, Ellen DeGeneres is great. It's a fun time. But, if you're asking somebody, what is the plot of Finding Nemo? You would not say, oh yeah, the plot of Finding Nemo is the fish who goes to save his son across the ocean. That is the plot of the movie. It's not actually what the theme of the movie is about. Likewise, you would not say, oh yeah, Finding Nemo. It's like Marlin and Dory, and you know, there's a shark in there named Bruce, and Nemo, of course, you know, the movie is named Nemo. Those are characters, they're not the themes of the movie. You would not use vague statements like, oh yeah, Finding Nemo, the theme of that is family. Themes are a little bit more defined, so you wouldn't just say, oh yeah, it's family. You would say, oh, the theme of Finding Nemo is family is worth finding, or family is, you know, deeper than blood because Marlon becomes, you know, friends with Dory and she becomes part of their family. Those are more concrete examples of what a thematic element is. Along with theme being like this big umbrella that covers stuff or the icing on a cake, stories can have a central theme, they can have multiple themes, sometimes they can have contradicting themes. Sometimes an author can write a story that has no theme. It just all depends on what the author wants to convey to us as the audience. So now that we know what theme is and what theme isn't, we're gonna do some practice on how to identify themes. And I'm gonna give you guys a couple tools that I found helpful when I'm trying to identify themes. But we're gonna do this with the help of one of my favorite superheroes and all time favorite movies, Spider-Man 2. It's so good, look at it. Look at it! Oh my goodness. Okay, so how do you find themes when you're watching a movie or you're reading a story? A good rule of thumb is to look at the protagonist. Protagonist of Spider-Man 2 is Spider-Man, and what happens to him in this movie? He starts off, he's Spider-Man, he is doing stuff, he starts to lose his powers, he loses confidence in himself, his relationships are strained with people around him, a supervillain emerges, Dr. Octopus. Spider-Man is challenged by that. He needs to have his powers back. He regains confidence in himself after finding out that self-sacrifice is worth doing the right thing. And then in the end, he is able to overcome Dr. Octopus because of this new thing that he has learned. Central story of Spider-Man 2. So following him, following him as a protagonist, the arc that he goes on informs us as to what thematic elements are at play in this movie. Obviously this is Spider-Man, we have all heard with great power comes great responsibility many times, but looking at Peter's arc from where he starts in this movie to where he ends up in this movie, it's very clear to see that, oh yeah, with great power comes great responsibility is represented in this film. Looking at the protagonist and seeing the different character arcs that they have will help to inform what themes are in play. Another great way is sometimes characters just outright say things 
that are themes in movies. They might not be verbatim, but they say things that are pretty close. In this movie, there's a scene where Peter is helping Aunt May move out of her house after it's been repossessed. And she says, sometimes to do what's right, we have to be steady and give up the things we want the most, even our dreams. Peter's been struggling a lot with this life that he's pictured, this idealized life, and the responsibility and the power he's been given as Spider-Man. And so when Aunt May says this, it resonates with him, and that's what helps him to get back into being Spider-Man. And again, that statement sums up the movie. So you could chalk that up to a more succinct version of Sometimes to do what's right, it requires self-sacrifice. You wanna know what the theme of Spider-Man 3 is? When you try to put everything in a movie, it comes out like a big piece of <laughs> When you're incorporating themes into your own writing, there's a couple ways that you can do that. A way number one is to choose a theme and to write around it. So maybe you're like, I wanna write a story that has the theme of revenge. So you would start with this idea of revenge and maybe you might say, I want to write, you know, it about revenge and we'll have it be like, revenge is meaningless in the end. That's the theme of the movie. So you would write your plot around like maybe your character experiences this journey towards revenge and they finally get their revenge, but they're worse off than where they started. That would convey revenge is meaningless in the end. Another way that you could do it is you could just write a story and let the natural themes emerge. This again will be very dependent on your life experiences and what you will read into your stories and your characters. For example, for me personally, when I write, I a lot of stuff that tends to naturally show up in my writing is I like redemption stories or I like a fallen hero who's able to be redeemed. I like this idea of somebody who was this one thing, they stood for this one, maybe like this evil purpose, and through the course of their life, different characters that they meet, they end up at this other place where they're a completely different person. I love those themes of redemption. Depending on whatever you're trying to do, either one of those techniques might be a good way to proceed. A word of caution when regarding themes. Themes are very subjective. And I know that seems weird, like this is me ending this video, it's almost over, but themes are very subjective. And so you can watch a film and someone else can watch a film, and you can come away with vastly different themes. For some things, like Spider-Man is a good example, the themes are pretty straightforward in that movie. With great power comes great responsibility, or even like, you know, to do what's right comes with personal cost, or even like we can't do things alone, we need to let other people help us, like, you know, people in Peter's life, significant people help him. So even, but even in that, there's still some sub subjectivity of how you would read those things. In other movies, for example, let's even stay with superheroes. In The Dark Knight, for example, there's a lot of stuff happening in that movie and the director and writer put lots of themes into that movie. And there might be themes that we read into it. In the case of The Dark Knight, you know, a clear theme could be like, good triumphs over evil. Another one that is taken from something that's said in that movie is, you know, Batman is the hero Gotham needs, uh, not the one that they deserve. Another theme that people have read into The Dark Knight is the idea of terrorism and how does a country or a nation or people respond to terrorism. Some of these things with themes, people read different things into them because we all bring personal stories into our viewing or our reading of a piece of fiction or nonfiction or whatever the case is. We bring our own reading into these movies that we watch. Hmm. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video about theme. I hope it's helpful. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content about this, about storytelling, and about how to make movies. And until next time, get out there and make some movies.